All right, so we're going to add a few more details um, about inverse functions um, before we look at a couple of examples. So the, the standard notation, this, this function that we're able to define by reversing the arrows, as it were, um, this is usually denoted by f, this f to the minus 1. Um, and, and a lot of people will find this, this notation confusing, right? It's not an exponent. Um, the, the notation comes from, from algebra, essentially, where, where we can talk about inverse operations, right? Uh, we can talk about, for example, division as the inverse of multiplication. And we know that you know, division is multiplying by the reciprocal. We often denote reciprocals with negative exponents. And, and so that's where the notation comes from. But of course, um, this function is, is not just the reciprocal of the original function, right? This is something very different from a reciprocal, right? Um, graphically, we have this sort of idea here. Um, so here's, here's some function. I, I don't know what it is. Uh, the fact that it's one to one uh, is reflected in, in, in this idea that if you were to cut with horizontal lines, there's no point on the graph where a horizontal line is going to cut the graph more than once, right? So as soon as you have, have a graph that, say, goes up and then comes back down, or goes down and comes back up, your function is not going to be one to one, because you're going to have two, two points with the same y value, right? Um, what we want here is that for, every, for any given y value, there's only one x value that realizes it, right? And we see that here. Now, when you define the inverse, right, what this is more or less telling us here, right, is that if, if x, y, is a point on the graph of f, right? y equals f of x is saying that the point x, y is on the graph. Um, then y, x is a point on the graph of the inverse, right? And so we, we see that here, that if, if this is some point a, b on the graph y equals f of x, so that would mean that f of a equals b, um, then f inverse of b equals a. So b, a would be a point on the, on the graph of the inverse. And, and visually, you have this sort of reflection across this line. So this is the line y equals x here, right? And the graph of the inverse, you basically just take the, gra the original graph, um, you mirror it across the line y equals x, and that gives you the graph for the inverse, OK? So um, one of the kind of important things about inverse functions, and we've seen this already with the exponential and logarithmic functions, is you have these these cancellation properties. Okay, so basically, so let's say that we have y equals f of x, and so that means that f inverse of y would be equal to x. We can say the following, we can say that f inverse of f of x is, well, f of x is y, right? So this is f inverse of y, but f inverse of y is just x, right? So notice that f, f inverse, they cancel out, they give you back the thing you started with. Um, and same thing in the other order. If I did f of f inverse of y, well, f inverse of y is just x and f of x is y, right? So again, we see the function in its inverse, they cancel out and give you back what you started with. So this is the sense in which these are inverses, right? They're in inverses with respect to function composition, right? So if you compose a function with its inverse, they cancel out and they leave you with what's called the identity function, the function that just does nothing to the input, right? It, the output's the same as the input. Um, these cancellation properties are, are often useful when you're working with inverse functions, right? It's, it's one of the ways that we end up using inverses. Um, so the way you should probably think of the inverse is it's sort of like an undo button, right? Whatever the original function did, the inverse is going to undo it and get you back to where you started. All right? So we'll look at a couple of examples um, of functions. We'll show that they're one-to-one. -one. We'll find their inverses. And then we'll move on and we'll talk about derivatives.